just talk about that. Let's give it up for John Ratzenberger, everybody. Above ground. That's, that's always a good thing. Well, yeah. this is a bright group yeah. for Sunday morning. Do we still in the morning? No, just past. Yeah, I was just mentioning uh, back as the uh, the underminer. I just saw Incredibles two, and it's uh, they. Oh, you saw the whole I, thing. I, I did. We had, uh, I saw it in a uh, little. Look, I got to see it a little early, which is which is a cool thing. Oh, because but, of uh, you, yeah, 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 but. Uh, no spoilers, don't worry. But uh, yeah, how, how did it feel to you know step back into that film? Because the, the original one was 14 years ago, I believe, and and to come back as a because yeah, the character appeared in the first movie as well, I guess, right? The Underminer, he was in the first. Right, film. yeah, the Underminer appeared right at the end of the first movie. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll try to talk loud anyway. Um, did you have to rewatch the first movie and they figure like how are you going to do this again, or does it just kind of come right back I to you? I am the Underminer. No, well, the thing about the underminer is because he's beneath ground, I thought I'd put some gravel in his voice because he's always got to be swallowing dirt. <laughs> so I, that's how he talks. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense to me. <laughs> but yeah, 14 years ago, so it's, it's conceivable that someone who saw the first one will be bringing their mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty cool. I like that. That's it's cool. like that with a lot of the other films too, you know, talking like Toy Story, the same thing. That 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 film yeah. has been generations and generations have in, enjoyed that movie, and and it's it's really cool that you're a part of all that, and 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 really the only person to be a part of all of it, which is very cool. How was, was that a planned thing? Was that kind of like someone trying to let's see like a ch personal challenge someone made to themselves that they could let's try to put John in every Pixar movie? No, I, I've got some Polaroids of Steve Jobs with farm animals. <laughs> And um, they're not going anywhere. But, you know, uh, no, I, I, I'm not even sure how it happened, and, and I don't question it. Um, you know, because I don't want to start poking it and say, what is this? Is this real? So I just, okay, and as long as they call me, I'll show up and do my job and go home. Yeah, and then and the first one, I guess going back to the beginning with uh, Toy Story right. and, and, and Ham, 21 years ago. Now. That was, yeah, we're working on, I know there's a, they've announced the date for the fourth movie uh, next, I believe it's next June, I believe, 2019. Yeah, I do some recording for that in a couple of weeks. All right, so Ham is back. I wish I think it was a no-brainer. Yeah. It's very cool. So, so you haven't, how, so how far, how far in advance do you know that you're coming back or do you, I guess they kind of do a lot of the preliminary animation first and they kind of give you a call or how does that kind of, how does it all fit I, together? I usually did get uh, one of those Google reports you know, if my name's mentioned, it pops up on my phone. <laughs> As, oh, you know, and coming back, we're praising the role, blah, 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 blah. Go, oh, look at that, we're doing another one. <laughs> so, no, nobody calls me to confer or ask my permission. Mm -hmm. says, Is it, John, is it okay if we do another film? But, so, no, that's the way I find, I find out when you guys find out, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I asked, I, I could find out, certainly. I could... But I don't. I don't ask. Is it is it odd, uh, you know, being in a, you know, doing all the animation work, and you you don't really work with the people that you're you, you co-star with? Is no, it? No, it takes too long. Um, you know, if you have five people recording, four of them could be just spot on perfect, and the fifth guy, you could hear the change rattling in his pocket, or so you got to start from the beginning again. You know, it's, it's just easier. But also with Pixar, they make it so easy. They do all the heavy lifting in that they've already worked on the script for three or four years. So the director, like this next one, Brad Bird, he knows every punctuation, every pause, every sigh. He just knows every single character and how they connect and how they should connect and where they connect. And so he's the one that directs the flow. So when he tells you, but, you know, do, do it you know, lower and be more afraid or, you know, uh, say it like you've just run a mile. And then, okay, that's, you literally just do what the director tells you. 
There's no heavy lifting involved for me. And, and the process itself, how, how long does it take? Because some of these roles that you played are, are, are some are smaller, some are bigger. We've seen like, you know, Mac in Cars and Ham, and there's a couple that are a little bit smaller. How long does it take to even do some of the smallest ones? I imagine that probably still takes a few, a few hours of recording, and they probably, do they get you to do like a million takes, or do you go in there and nail it in one, and then you hit the road? Like, how does that work out? No, I've been doing this for a long time. I actually invented the system. It was the first Toy Story, and um, usually, and those of you out there who record, you'll, you'll understand this. Uh, you, you've got the microphone, and there's a booth, and you got the director and producer and you know whoever in there, and then it's, you do the first line. The, oh, look at that cricket! You know, and, and so you say the line, and then they confer, and then you see all this. You know, and you're like. Uh, and then, the, okay, John, let's try that again. And could you say it faster? Look at that cricket. You know, and so I said, how, how about this? Let's, let's, uh, let me, I'll give you five different ways on each line. And you tell me which one is the best or the closest. And that way, so we started that system and uh, shaved off a lot of time. So what used to take three hours might take 45 minutes now. Have you ever got recognized just by your voice? Have you ever had to call like you know your insurance oh, I, I company it, and people go, it. "Wait, are you?" I do it on purpose. Like in supermarkets with your little kids. I remember there was a, a, a kindergarten class in a line like little ducklings, following the teacher in uh, Central Park, and uh, they're all, you know, holding hands with each other. And, and as the last one passed me, I said, "Hey, where's Buzz Lightyear and Woody?" And go. <laughs> 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 So, and about five or six kindergartners spinning around. I, I got fun with that. Yeah, I like that. And we were just talking about this backstage. Uh, you know, we're saying, you know, how many things that you've been in. I was, I, I said, like, I, I got a sore neck looking at your IMDb because there's just so many, so many things. And you, and you said that you sometimes stumble across things that you forgot you were in. That's that happens. Yeah, yeah. I've I've been in situations where you'll know, be sitting there with my kids or. Uh, myself just you know watching something and they go wait a minute I was in that because <laughs> I think that's vaguely familiar maybe I saw this before and mm -hmm. then I went, don't I filmed that in Malta <laughs> yeah. so because I just it, I think it's and, and it and it comes from having uh, uh, I'll try to avoid the phrase blue collar background because it's to me, they're essential workers, people who are, like my son's a plumber, and uh, that's essential. Plumbing's a lot more important than acting, but, because uh, we need to take showers as actors. You know. But, um, from because my father was a truck driver, and he'd come home from work, he never talked about work. <laughs> and so I think I picked up on that. So my kids actually thought I was a carpenter until they were about seven, eight years old. And this is while I was doing Cheers. Yeah, it's because I never talked about it. I mean, why? What are you going to talk about to your kids, young kids? Well, you know, we had the scene today where uh, they don't care. <laughs> you know, they, they're coloring books and running around in the yard. But uh, I think that's where it comes from. So I, I, I don't talk and remind myself that I did a certain thing. TV shows, I do that all the time. There was a love boat recently that I was in. I forgot I was in. Anything this weekend that people have surprised you with? They come, they come to your table and they get you to sign something that you're like, oh my gosh, memory lane. Oh, all the time. All the time? Oh yeah, House 2. Uh, a little obscure things. Uh, Warlords of Atlantis. Wow. Uh, Arabian Adventure. Real obscure old ones. Because when I, I lived in England for 10 years and did a lot of movies over there. And when the agent would approach you about a film, I never said who's directing it or who wrote it or let me see the script. I always said, where's the location? Because I thought, this is a cool gig because I can get to travel all over the world and have somebody else pay for it. <laughs> so if it was an A film being filmed right in London, I would eschew that and instead go for a, a B, C film being filmed in, like I said, Malta. Like, wow, I get to go to Malta. So it's, yeah, I'm probably the dumbest actor in the world, but 
<laughs> I just like to travel, just that the spe spectacle of history and geography. And I've always uh, been all about that since I was a kid. Very cool. And you mentioned uh, Cheers. Anyone here at the, the event last night? Show. You were on that show. Yeah, I was, was, on that was show. at the event last night with these with uh, George and uh, John. That's cool. Yeah, and we were talking about, I know a lot about the uh, the show last night, and uh, if you have questions for uh, John about Cheers, uh, be sure to uh, make sure you ask a question a bit. But before we throw to audience questions, uh, I know you, you you play Cliff on the show, who's a yeah, who's a, a, a bit of an, and a know-it-all, right? He's, he knows, he's, a, he's a very, very smart guy. And you said last night that you yourself, uh, you, you dabble in the, in, the, in the trivia, right? You watch a little Jeopardy? <laughs> That's be a good T-shirt. Dabble in the trivia. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, what does that mean? Yeah. Um, I, I I've just been an avid reader since I was very young. Just well, I wanted to uh, I want to put you to the test actually because sure, you know we, here we are in uh, you know on the Canadian side of Niagara Falls, and the, I, I boiled it down to just some true or false oh, questions. Okay? okay, these are true, true or false. All right, we're gonna put uh, put Cliff to the test. Some of these are easy, some of these are a little tougher. We're starting, we'll start slow and work our way up. The capital of Canada is Toronto. True or false? Uh, that's false. Do you know what it is? Ottawa. Ottawa. Very good. There it's go. also where the RCMP was first founded. Everybody know the story? That's such a glorious story. <laughs> it really is. That's, uh, yeah, they were, there was like the Magnificent Seven because they were all... <clears throat> Villains and gunslingers, because the villains, the bad guys out in the uh, Pacific Northwest, were ruling the whole area, and Ottawa said we got to stop it. So they got the baddest of the bad. It was like a, about a dozen of them, and by the time they reached uh, British Columbia, the bad guys had all fled because of their because of their reputation. Does anybody know that story? It's unbelievable. All right. Yeah. Well, there you go. <clears throat> All right. And uh, I don't know. Right? We've never met. No. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I always think, why did they make a movie of that? Maybe it'll be in Malta and you can go shoot it. Yeah, well, whatever. <clears throat> but no, these were the baddest of the bad. These guys were really butt kickers. All right. Nobody Canada's knows. national sport is hockey. True or false? No, it's got to be. It's either that or maple syrup gathering. <laughs> It is, uh, it's false. Lacrosse is Canada's national sport. Oh, I thought that was Vermont's national sport. True story. Look it up, guys. I know. Mind-blowing, right? The longest street in the world is located in Canada. Is that true or false? The longest what? street in the world is located in street Canada. Street or highway? Street. No, the longest is uh, Sepulveda Boulevard in California. The longest is actually Young Street in uh, Toronto. No, it's not. <laughs> The Mall of America is owned by Canadians. True or false? Uh, true. True. It's a company in Edmonton, actually, based out of Edmonton. All right, after Pearl Harbor, Canada declared war on Japan first. True or false? I, that's probably true. That is true. <clears throat> also, the, the French Canadians were the first ones to hit the beaches on uh, in Omaha Beach. And they were the most feared troops of the Germans. Mm -hmm. When the Germans knew that they were French Canadian troops, they would go around them. Fierce. I mean, you got I just got such a wonderful history, and uh, that's what should be on TV. We're sticking with history for this one, and we have some. I mean, we have a few Americans in the audience, right? It's, yeah. There we go. Okay, this is the one that's going to really, right, really Thank divide you. the room. Okay. All right. In the two times the U.S. invaded Canada, the U.S. won both. Is that true or false? Is that false? False. It is false. Canada won both. Hey! <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Canadian money is not only in cool colors, but it also has Braille-like markings on it. Is that true or false? Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. That is true. There you go. All right, now this is uh, one for Niagara Falls. Tourists have been struck by falling fish touring the falls. Is that true or false? Sure, well, like on the, on the boat. So if you're on the tour that takes you kind of underneath in the caves and there's people that have been actually hit by fish. Is that... I would say it's true. That's true. It is true. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm a fisherman. That's, there's some of them. Like the flounder you get out, well, not here in British Columbia. They're huge. Yeah, they'll knock you oh, right out. Oh, break your leg. All right, there are more Canadians living in the U.S. with expired visas than any other group, and any other group of immigrant. Is that true or false? 
Yeah, Samantha B's one. That's true. <laughs> it is true. Apparently, they've estimated there's about 93,000 Canadians hiding down there. I, I think. <laughs> All right, last one. The moose is the national animal of Canada. True or false? I don't think so. It is false. What is, do you know what it is? It's a beaver. It is the beaver. Pretty good overall, I would say, right? Yeah, moose. Yeah. yeah. Moose. People think moose. It's yeah. got to be beaver. All right, we have some audience questions, I know. So we, have, uh, we do have an aisle mic, but I don't know if we, if we need it. I don't know. Last time we did okay without it. Is that the official name of that? It is the aisle, aisle mic. mic. Yeah. Yeah. That's aisle it. mic. That's if you're an usher in a theater and your name is Mike, you'd be I am Mike. <laughs> All right, anyone have a question? Just maybe throw your hand up and uh, let's go to you. So let's start in the back. Yeah, very, yeah, go ahead. No, that was them. That was that was that was all them. Um, yeah, I forget what. It, do you remember the the line? Oh, yeah. I, I remember the potato that looked like Nixon. <laughs> All right. What's your question? Let's go to you. Yep, go ahead. Yep, go ahead. Favorite Pixar role? I like uh, uh, P.T. Flea. Because he's so avaricious. He'd sell his grandmother for a couple of dollars. And, and he's always on the edge, his anxiety is always on the edge. And when, when I meet people like that, it always makes me laugh. Cause I, you know, you want to say, listen, there's no luggage racks on a hearse. So relax, you know. Now that's a movie they got to do. They got to do A Bug's Life 2 already. I'm, wait, I'm waiting for that for a long time. You, know, you won't get anything out of him, though. He's been holding secrets for how many years now? 21. 21. He's like a lockbox. All right, go ahead. The, the, talking about the Jeopardy I, episode. Yeah, the Jeopardy episode where, where Cliff bets, what was it, 20,000 big ones? And, and gets, gets it wrong. Um, I still watch Jeopardy, by the way. My children know not to call me when Jeopardy's on. Because <laughs> I'm not answering. The phone, I'm answering the questions. <laughs> All right, what is your question? Let's go over to you. Yeah, I, I uh, for the Travel Channel, I, yeah, I really enjoyed that because I, I was a carpenter before I got into this business, and uh, anybody need any house built or <laughs> cabinets I install? And, you know. uh, and as I was going around the country, I realized that there was no young people operating machines and building things and welding and swinging hammers, so I started making speeches about that, saying, look, you know, it's nice to have a video game in the house, but you know, when, when we were young, we not only fixed our own bicycles, we built our own bicycles out of spare parts and this and that, and hot rod racers, and built tree houses. And actually, we thought we were outside playing, but in fact, we were problem solving all the time. So here we are, kids, problem solving. And so we grew up as adults who could solve problems. And um, and now that doesn't happen anymore. So uh, I really enjoyed that because it gave, uh, it's I, kind of like a mission. I actually serve on the, uh, the president's task force for apprenticeships to reinstate the idea of apprenticeships and say, hey, it's okay if you don't go to college. It's, you know, like my own son, I, I mentioned it before, but he's, he's a plumber. Uh, I just I just got a call from the White House, and uh, I said, yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, and uh, I guess somebody had submitted my name because again I've been doing this for 20 years. I mean, it's it, at least that, and you know, writing articles and uh, actually wrote a book on it. But 
uh, and so it's the same thing in Canada as, as in the States, but there are less and less people who are handy, I guess is the word. But, you know, I, I just find that odd that we did that to ourselves. But we're, um, we're with, uh, Mike Rowe from Jersey what about him? No, no, I, I've I've wanted to, and uh, just it seems like uh, never never happens. But I was I grew up around people that made things. You know, my whole town was a factory town, so everybody had tools. And when I was 14, I said I want to learn how to build a house and everything in it, and so I did. I could build a sofa. You want a sofa? <laughs> it's going to be ugly, but it'd be comfortable. <laughs> So far, a two by fours. You were saying yesterday at the uh, last night at the event, you had your your shoes were nailed to the floor at one time in your career. Well, that was when I was, was the end of my apprenticeship, uh, just before I became a journeyman. Uh, the carpenters on the crew nailed me to uh, the rafters, and uh, so I just had to <laughs> extract myself. They all went, then went to lunch, and during that time, I had to you know pry the nails out of my boots and find other shoelaces because I had to cut my shoes off with a Stanley knife. and uh, it, it, But it was, like I said yesterday, it was one of the biggest days of my life because that was the day I was accepted. Oh, and they put you through all kinds of stuff, you know. Go get the board stretcher, you know. And I, I didn't really fall for that, but I've seen kids, you know, hey, go get the board stretcher. Well, wh wh where is it? Paulie's got it. It goes to Paulie. Paulie, do you have the board stretcher? No, no, no. Anthony's got it. He's over. Oh, gee, I think he's by his truck. Hey, Anthony, you got the board stretcher? And it's, uh, they'll go half the day. They realize, wait a second. <laughs> you can't stretch a board. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we had some questions over here. Let's go over to you. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I was the uh, National Walk Chairman for the uh, uh, Juvenile Diabetes Foundation for a lot of years, because uh, one of my kids is affected, insulin dependent, um, and and I work w with uh, with veterans uh, as well. Very cool. All right, let's go over to you on the side here. I, I, I came up with Cliff uh, in the audition. I was auditioning for something completely different, and I failed because I, I never went to acting school. As you can probably tell sometimes. And I said, oh, this guy never went to acting school. Um, but so I was, I was auditioning, which I had never done before. Cheers was really my first audition because I had created my own shows in Europe when I lived over there and did a lot of films because uh, the casting people, they would seen me on stage and so one thing led to another. So I get to Los Angeles and <laughs> auditioning and uh, I, was, I, I, I don't know how to do this. So I did a bad job anyway and as I was on the way out the door, I said, do you have a bar know it all? And one of the guys said, what are you talking about? I said, you know, the kind of guy who says, you know, the pitcher originally was called the hopscotch. Because, and, and I just went into this character. I just really wanted to make them laugh enough that I could get out with my dignity. That's really all I wanted to do. But two days later, they said, hey, we want to try this character out. And, and I suggested that it was, well, I didn't really suggest a, a, a profession. I said, whoever it is, he's got to have keys hanging from his belt. <laughs> because if you notice, and I know some of you are guilty of this, you walk around, you got a bunch of keys hanging from your belt where everybody can see him, right? It's, you know, it's usually janitors, custodians, and uh, but that's, they're showing you how much stuff they know about. Like, yeah, I know about this. Look, I can, I know everything in there. And, yeah. So, so, yeah, because, and I've tried this, I get in an elevator or something and meet one of these guys. Ask them a question, any question. What's the length of a whale's intestine? You know, when was the Schwinn bicycle invented? They will never say, I don't know. Ever. So that's, that's how Cliff was created. But I, I used 
from my childhood that we had a, a cop in the neighborhood who was the father of a buddy of mine who he, you'd think that he was the head of the CIA. <laughs> well, but he go like this, his attitude was always like this. It's like, you know, when you're uh, riding your bicycles down the street, uh, you know, don't forget that uh, signal left, signal right. Uh, do you know the proper signals there, Johnny? Uh, yes, yeah, okay, left and right. That's right, okay. Now, and we'd laugh at him all the time. We just thought he was hysterical, so I kind of used his attitude in creating the character. Cool. Thank you so much. All right, let's go to the very back. Yeah, go ahead. I was? <laughs> Son of a gun. I knew that uniform came from somewhere. No, yes, yes, I was. Yeah, I was uh, uh, there with uh, scenes with Robert Redford crossing the, uh, the Nijmegen River. And oh, geez, that went a lot. Uh, <laughs> just, I uh, my my trailer was here. Robert Redford's trailer was there, and every single morning there'd be a big group of uh, Dutch people waiting for Robert Redford to come out of his trailer. So they would surround him and get autographs, and so on the way to the set, you know, he'd be back there. I you know meet him at the set. And then the last day, they were filming me getting shot in the face, where I had to come in two hours earlier to get a prosthetic made. Well, you, you didn't know who I was, because the bullet was supposed to have entered here and blown off that part of my face. So I did the makeup, couldn't tell who I was. We both came out of our trailers about the same time to go to set. Everybody started to rush to Robert Redford, but then they saw me and they rushed to me. Now, you don't know who I am. I mean, it's just, this is some guy with a, you know, but for some reason they wanted my autograph. So I, I signed it Robert Redford anyway. <laughs> so that was fun. <laughs> All right. What's your question? Oh, tons. <laughs> practical jokes on the chairs. Oh, yeah. The saran wrap over the toilet seat, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Who got it the worst on that set, do you no, think? It, it was, was it evil? Just, e equal? No, it was, it was equal. Well, the, the girls didn't really do it. But the boys, yeah, we were pretty uh, ruthless. If George was here, he'd remember more than I did. He and Woody had an ongoing practical joke war. How long was Woody looking for the board stretcher? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, over to you. Well, the, the truck at the uh, uh, drive-in movie? No, no, it was just John Lasseter said, oh, listen, we're going to do something at the end of the movie here. I got some additional lines for you. I said, oh, okay. And so I went, hey, that's a, he's quite a talented thespian. You know, and, um, but no, I just read the lines, they recorded them, and I had no idea what they were going to do with them. But there's no, I don't, I don't question it. Because it's not a life or death situation. Oh, sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was funny. Yeah, you could try to do a whole movie at this point, which is your characters in the, in the Pixar world. Doing anybody else? Being just to uh, have all my characters. Yeah, just in one, one movie. big old crossover eventually yeah. someday. Well, you write it. And I'll... <laughs> <laughs> all right, challenge accepted. Actually, the Pez company created a set of Pez dispensers of all my characters. Oh, cool. They're, well, there's only three existing. I have one, John Lasseter has one, and Pez has one in their museum. Wow. So that, that ex actually exists. That's very cool. All right, you had a question right in the middle. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sure you've been asked this a million times, but do you think you uh, can be Christian if they approach you and you are your superior Jesus? Oh, sure. I mean, because basically what I'm doing now, that's we sit in a bar and crack jokes. <laughs> and they pay us. 
Sure, I think everybody would, except the, the producers. Mm -hmm. I just th I think they're far too wealthy. So I, I, I don't know why it hasn't even been mentioned. Well, this is the time. There's so many. We're seeing all these, all these shows coming back on the air. So, I mean, this is... And we had the largest audience. I mean, there was... The last show, I think we had 93 million people watching it. Wow. Yeah, go ahead. Oh no, no, Woody! I, I when I first met him, I knew that you know he was going to go like a rocket because he loved acting and he's just got all that kind of energy. And uh, no, he's you know he's he's been in some really good films. I questioned him on his choices about a couple of them, uh, but that's all another story. Uh, but um, yeah, he, no, he's good. He's good. And then you, yeah, you also asked if you had any advice for a, a younger actors coming into the industry. I, I, you know, I, I came into it in such an odd way. You know, when they were all you know, trying to keep me out the front door, I went around back and snuck in the kitchen window. <laughs> um, yeah, to have a life, bring something to the game. You know, the, the golden age of Hollywood, what was it, like 1940s, 50s, would you say? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I don't know, that's, I, I think, you know, all the big, big stars, the Cary Grants. <clears throat> well, they had all gone through a worldwide depression, world war, and they were in the war. And they had, a, and I'm not talking about just the actors, the directors, the writers, uh, cinematographers. They had all been through real life, as real as it gets. And they brought that to the game as an artist. And now it's a little different. They, not bringing a lot to the game. I mean, they're people they got on screen as heroes. You think, well, he's not a hero. This is not somebody's house you'd rush to if there was a big earthquake and say, can you help me? You know, it's it's just, it's changed. It's just changed. But I'd, I'd say get a life, do something. You know, before you become an actor or, or have some interest way outside of acting that you're passionate about. It just makes you more of an interesting person. All right, cool. We have time for a couple more questions. So yeah, let's go over to you on the side. Yep. Well, Coach, uh, he was a, a, di a director and uh, uh, a drama teacher in his own right. Uh, he was very well known for that. But uh, he would go into his character as soon as he stepped out of his car in the parking lot. His car, by the way, was a Cadillac, and the horn was the uh, theme song to uh, The Godfather. <laughs> uh, anybody know that? That's, yeah. That was when he, he beeped his horn, that's what would play. But I said to him, I said, Nicky, I said, what's, what's going on in your head when you, you do your character? Because he did it so beautifully. It's really just, it's like watching a ballet. Just his double takes and got surprised. And he said, rats, he said, as soon as I get out of the car, I become an 11 year old. And that's how he played his character. But I really miss him. We were, we were pretty close. Because we're both New Englanders. We we're the only two New Englanders in the show. I don't know if that means anything, but we like leaves changing colors, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> All right, thank and you oysters. so much. All right, let's go. We had someone in the aisle. I think I've been passing you by for a while. Go ahead. Yeah. So when the show ended, so obviously you had a deal to move on and, and do other stuff. When the show ended, did you ever have any thoughts of anything else or after 11 years were you just done with? Oh, no, no. The, uh, Paramount Pictures approached George and I uh, to do a series of films. To be like uh, Bing Crosby and Bob Hope did a series of films where they travel, you know, you know, Bob, Hope and Crosby go to Morocco. Hope and Crosby join the Navy. Laurel and Hardy did that too. Laurel and Hardy is in the Foreign Legion and, and they wanted to do the same thing with us. You know, Cliff and Norm go to sea. <laughs> Cliff, and Norm, Cliff and Norm, you know, work in a hospital. And uh, which we thought was hysterical. We both wanted to do it, but 
The Cheers producers uh, wouldn't allow it because they wouldn't have been part of it, writing or anything. But uh, so we were kind of disappointed, but would have loved to have done that. All right, we have number one more question. You wanna you wanna go ahead and pick? Uh, Bugs Life. All right. The character P.T. Flea. Do we have to end now? This is a great audience. Yeah, we have. We got to. We got to. You know, we got to make room because we got. To, we got to clear out. And we got to George coming in next. So uh, yeah, we got to. Well, it'd be the same audience, wouldn't it? no? <laughs> I mean, it, th theoretically, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. It's a nice. Nice way to start the day. All right, everybody. I'll be at my house next Sunday. Just. <laughs> well, Okay, well, everyone, give it, uh, give it up for uh, John Ratzenberger. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching the Convention Junkies coverage of the 2018 Niagara Falls Comic Con. Please like, comment, and subscribe to see more, and let us know below what you think of this video. If you would like to help us with future projects, please visit our Patreon page.